Hello, everybody. Uh, now we're going to go into atomic structure. And like with the slides on matter, this is going to be a bunch of background information that we're going to keep coming back to through the semester. So it's really important that you get this stuff down. I'm going to go through it briefly. I'm probably going to take a few slides to do this and excuse the barking dogs in the background. All right, so I'm going to start with an early atomic theory, and we'll discuss this at length. Uh, I may go in and out of writing stuff on a whiteboard here. So Dalton's atomic theory says all matter is composed of indivisible atoms. So the word indivisible means cannot be divided. So what this says is that the smallest piece of an element is an atom, and that's true, and we're going to come back to that. Next one, atoms of the same element are the same. Atoms of different elements are different. Now, this part, atoms can combine in whole number ratios to form compounds. Let's look at this for just a second, and I'm going to go to this. All right. So what we mean by whole number ratios, if we look at water, right? we've looked at a formula before, H2O, what this means is that the hydrogen to oxygen ratio is 2 to 1. Now, mathematically, we could say that it's 1 to one half, meaning for every hydrogen there's a half of an oxygen. But the reason we can't do this is because of that very first piece where if an atom is indivisible, there's no such thing as a half of an atom. So when they combine, they're going to combine in ratios of two to one. So this one here, this can't happen. There are always whole number ratios because there's no such thing as a half of an atom. It's really that simple. All right. Um, and then this one says you can put the same stuff together differently and get different stuff. Atoms of the same elements combine in different ratios to form different compounds. So again, let's go to the whiteboard. What this means is let's say I have um, this compound H2O, right? And we know all sorts of interesting stuff about water, right? This is water. Water is a clear colorless liquid at room temperature, water is necessary for life as we know it. Another compound between hydrogen and oxygen is H2O2. This is called hydrogen peroxide. And I don't care if you know that it's called hydrogen peroxide, but this has a hydrogen to oxygen ratio of 2 to 2. And hydrogen peroxide has very different properties than water. Hydrogen peroxide is extremely reactive. We store it in a brown bottle because it reacts with sunlight, right? And so the point is, same elements put together in different ratios, very different compounds. Here's another one you might be familiar with. Carbon dioxide, right, is carbon to oxygen in a 1 to 2, and every time you exhale. Carbon monoxide is a 1 to 1 and this is a toxic gas. So the point is not what the compounds are. The point is that different elements, you can put the same stuff together differently and you get very different stuff. So that's all I just wanted you to realize about that. All right, so that's Dalton's atomic idea. The idea is that we combine elements in whole number ratios to form compounds. Now, it turns out Dalton wasn't completely right because there are subatomic particles. And if you watch popular science type of TV shows like uh, Nova or the Discovery Channel or how the universe works or any of that kind of stuff, you'll hear about quarks and neutrinos and anti-quarks and uncle quarks and all sorts of stuff like that. But we're going to stop at protons, neutrons, and electrons. So proton, P, but so this is another thing that we I mentioned earlier, knowing prefixes and things like that are very, very helpful in the sciences. So proton, pro like positive, positively charged particles, they have a mass of one. Uh, neutrons, from the same root as neutral, they also have a mass of one, but they have a charge of zero. And then electrons are negatively charged. They don't really have a relative mass of zero. Their mass is what's called negligible, which means it's so small it doesn't matter. They do have mass, but the mass is extremely small. Whoops. All right. And because an atom is electrically neutral, the number of protons will always be equal to the number of neutrons. Now, one of the best places to get information is a periodic table. And you have one on the inside cover of your textbook. I would strongly suggest that you print out a couple of these and just put them in strategic places. 
put one on your wall. All the cool kids have periodic tables on the wall. I'll put a nice one on the website if I haven't already so that you can have one that you can print. All right, but now when I first saw a periodic table, I thought, well, how weird. What a weird way to arrange this. I mean, wouldn't you make it a nice rectangle? What do all these numbers mean and things like that? And by the way, this is just kind of a fun website. It has a periodic table, and when you click on it, um, you'll see uh, all sorts of information about the elements. Also, this is an alphabetical list, and that's going to be probably more helpful to you because you guys don't know the symbols yet. But if you want to know the symbol for bismuth, bismuth is BI. So this is an alphabetical list. It'll be a little bit more helpful. All right, now, there's a type of notation that we use, and we use it mostly for radioactivity, which we will do a lot later. But for now, we're going to use this notation. So in this notation, the symbol of the element is X. The atomic number, the Z number, so if you back up, see the atomic number here? All right, the atomic number is the Z number, and that's the number of protons. And if we back up two slides, you can see that the elements, the number up here is the atomic number, so they're actually in order of atomic number. One, two, three, four, and so on. This number is called the mass number. If you remember, only protons and neutrons have appreciable mass, so the mass number is going to be the sum of the protons and the neutrons. So from that, we can fill in this. With this type of notation, we can look at carbon, and this is where it would be very handy to have a periodic table. But if you look at the periodic table, carbon is number 6. That means it has 6 protons. Aluminum is number 13, has 13 protons. Sulfur is number 16. Iron is number 26. So the atomic number is the number of protons. To get the number of neutrons, this number here is the protons plus the neutrons. So there's 12 protons and neutrons. Six of them are protons. That means six must be neutrons. So 12 minus six is six. Here, 27 minus 13 is 14. 35 minus 16 is 19. 56 minus 26 is 30. Always, always, always do the protons first. To determine the number of electrons, number of protons will be equal to the number of electrons if there's no charge. How will you know if there's a charge? If there's a charge, it'll be written. So for carbon, 6 protons, 6 electrons. For aluminum, 13 protons, 13 electrons. Now, for this is sulfur with a 2 minus charge, so it's actually the sulfide ion. We'll talk about naming later. If there's, now, that means there's two more negatives than there are positives. So that means if there's 16 positives, there have to be 18 negatives. For the iron ion, there's three more positives than there are negatives, or you can say three fewer negatives than there are positives. Probably a smarter way to do it. It's 26 protons. Must only be 23 neutrons. I'm sorry, electrons. All right? Now, what you can do when you're watching the video is hit pause, and you can try these on your own. And of course, when you're doing, if you're going through the slides on your own, I suggest that you watch the videos, and then you also have the PowerPoints, and you can go through them on your own. Take liberal use of the pause button on the videos. So try these by yourself. I'm going to just pause for a minute, and then you can hit pause and try it. And the next slide will be the answers. So I'm going to stop and count to five. You can listen to Bob Dylan. All right, well, let's, I hope you're back from pause. See how you did, all right? And again, if it's oxygen, there are eight protons, okay? Zinc has 30 protons. Bromine has 35 protons. 18 minus 8 is 10. 65 minus 30 is 35. 80 minus 35 is 45. To get the electrons, this is uncharged, so it's the same. 2 plus means that there's two fewer electrons than protons. Negative 1 means that there's one extra. Right. So just to summarize, atoms and ions, atoms have no net charge and the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. Ions are charged particles. Positively charged particles are called cations. It's not pronounced cation, it's pronounced cat. All right. And actually this is backwards. The number of electrons will be less than, I switched these, so I'm gonna, I'll fix the slides. Number of electrons will be less than the number of protons. These two things should be switched. Number of electrons are less than the protons, and here the number of electrons are greater than the protons. So I'll switch those arrows. 
Just to show you the properties, if we look at this one, here's potassium, the element, and potassium, the ion. All right, so potassium metal right here, right? You can see it's a shiny metal. This is the ion, it's a white powder. So you can see the physical properties are very, very different. You ready for the chemical properties? Okay, this is a YouTube video of potassium metal. You ready? Give it a second to come up. Cool. Whoops. All right. For the ion, I didn't find anything. It's because they're just really boring. All right. Whoops. So there's no cool pictures because it doesn't do anything. All right. I'm going to stop the video here. And this will be the end of video number one. Yeah, it's a system of